If you're watching this video, then more than likely you have missed a great big buck in the past. Maybe it's, it's fresh and raw from this last fall. Maybe it was a season or two before that or earlier. Either way, uh, the experience can just be so traumatic for uh, a passionate and dedicated whitetail hunter. Because let's face it, we don't get a lot of opportunities at big bucks. And I know across the country every year, thousands of hunters, whether that be bow hunters, gun hunters, they get a chance at that great big buck that they've been going after, or maybe it's a new buck. They botch the shot, they just clean miss, they wound the animal and don't recover it. And it's actually something that I have a hard time dealing with and moving on from the bucks that I have missed, the handful of absolute beautiful bucks that I've gotten a chance at and didn't execute the shot on. I can remember them all very vividly. I've dated gals in the past, we split up, and in the moment it was a big deal. But you move on and life goes on. And when I reflect back on some of these big buck misses, I can remember in vivid detail the aspects of the moments of, of trying to make that shot and then realizing that I had missed or unfortunately wounded the animal. And those experiences of missing those big bucks actually remain with me a lot more than a lot of other experiences in life whether it be past girlfriends or different things like that jobs whatever the point is is it's an extremely impactful experience before we can really move on and our goals for this fall and be positive and convicted about our goals for this fall we need to have a clear mind from whatever happened last fall or in prior falls so let's talk about some of these considerations for us hunters, us broken hearted hunters who have missed these great big bucks. How do we move on from this? And the first thing that I want you to think about and just ponder here is think of the successful people in your life. You know, whether that be hunters or just people in business or coworkers or friends or family, really successful people, they're not quitters, they don't, uh, spend too much time in self-pity and after I missed my great big buck this past fall and there's been others in the in before that I had a lot of you know I spent some time moping around and it just really had me down in the dumps we can't let ourselves um, you know fall victim to this mindset or this you know this place where we just we're, ha we're filled with self-pity and we're feeling like it, you know where we're dwelling on this issue to the point where it's becoming unhealthy i think it's natural and normal for us all to feel some levels of remorse and, and frustration when these things happen but at the end of the day it's unhealthy to spend too much time in that state of mind if a player in the mlb batters get into hitting slumps right and it's really a psychological thing and what we don't want to have happen is we get into our own hitting slump, in our case, a bow hunting slump or shooting slump where it starts to affect us up here. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, whether you're shooting a gun or shooting a bow, hunting is largely mental. It's a, it's a, a mental uh, sport in a way. And uh, we don't want to allow ourselves to be, uh, you know, dwell so long on these feelings of frustration or remorse or things like that that it starts to affect us up here and impacts our ability to move on in the future let's think about a couple other things on your miss for your big buck miss did you do everything else right did you find the right spot on public land if you're on private land did you find the right setup was your stand in the right location were you finding those doe zones that feed source the bedding areas were you putting the pieces of the puzzle together did you hunt the property correctly on private land did you have a good fall other than that one miss that's another important thing for us to keep in mind and in my case where I missed my buck the more I started to reflect back on the other things that I was doing right the more it told me that you know this was just a, a miss and that it, it, it wasn't anything more than that I had done everything else that I was supposed to. I had gotten away from other hunters. I had found the right stand location. I had found the movement and I had found that location where I was going to see a big buck in daylight. And those are things that we need to make sure that we have straight first. If we don't have those things straight, then next year we won't even have a big buck to miss. 
Think about that. Did you have all of the other basics in place? Were you doing everything else right? Take that miss, that, that ugly scenario and that, that thing that we're dwelling on so bad and just set it down for a moment. Did you put yourself in a position to be successful? If you did, then that's reason to be really excited and positive moving forward. There are a few concrete actions we can take to get out of this heartbroken state, to get out of this mindset where we're just dwelling on that miss of maybe a buck of a lifetime or maybe just a great big buck. And some of those concrete steps that we can take are only allowing yourself a certain period of days to dwell on it and mourn about it. And then picking a date on a calendar and then saying, after this date, I'm done dwelling on it and I'm just gonna move on. And I'm just gonna focus on the future. I'm just gonna focus on getting myself prepared and ready for this fall. Remember what I talked about earlier in the video, successful people aren't gonna spend their whole year dwelling and wallowing in their own self-pity, right? They're gonna pick themselves up they're going to keep punching and they're going to keep trying and they're going to keep knocking doors down until they get to and achieve their goal and that's the mindset we need to get to that's the mindset that i have used in what has successfully taken me past that ugly experience last fall of missing that giant buck that's number one that you can do just only allowing yourself so much time to mourn it circling that date on the calendar and then moving on and committing yourself to only facing forward to this fall to putting those fundamentals in place and the other thing we can do is commit ourselves to working on our shooting and this is a really tricky topic because there there are all kinds of videos out there about how to beat buck fever and and how to beat this and how to beat that and how to how to control it and I've watched a lot of them and at the end of the day, I, I still think there's a big mysterious part to this buck fever thing that I know I suffer from and I know other people suffer from. One of the best strategies that I have found to overcome buck fever and to work on it this coming spring and summer or even this off season if you can shoot somewhere during the winter time, don't shoot so much at those perfect circles on a target. I think that creates a lot of complacency with hunters I know it did for myself when you get too good at just shooting those white circles on a target you tend to the muscle memory wants to always go back to that the muscle memory is always looking for that white dot it it's drawing your eyes in it's drawing your attention in and it's putting your pins right exactly where they need to be you guys on a white tail there are no white dots so that's something that I have started doing. Now I missed my great big buck last fall, so you could argue that, well, Matt, it's not working very well <laughs> if you're still missing. And I think that's a fair point. But I believe that it has still improved my shooting in calming my buck fever um, by shooting at a larger blank target and forcing yourself to visualize um, a button or some type of orange dot on that target without having them there actually on the target. So think about that, there's a saying, aim small, miss small. It's really true. It's easy to say that phrase. It is much harder to actually execute it in the moment when you have a great big breathing giant whitetail in front of you while you're bow hunting or gun hunting. But think about that, practice with targets that aren't just the block with the white circle or any color circle. Practice on targets that force you to visualize that button or that pinpoint on the side and that will translate to uh, pinpointing that spot on the flank of a deer. That's another thing you can do. A third thing you can do to try to get out of this mindset, get out of this slump, we can't do it till the next hunting season, but that is to shoot does. And uh, if you're in an area or, and you, you want the venison and you're going to put it to good use and, and you can shoot an extra doe, that's a great way to practice. You guys know that. Um, but it, I, that's something that I use and I actually um, was able to successfully harvest a doe last fall. Um, again, it, it's not the same as the, you know, the moment where you have a, a great big buck uh, with a great big rack you know, in range. I realize that, but it, it does still help with um, you know a, a real simulation in the field so those are a handful of things um, you know actual steps that you can take to try to improve yourself for this next fall it's shooting does it's working on your shooting form it's it's making sure that you're not just getting too comfortable shooting at those white dots on a target 
and then it's being intentional about circling that date on the calendar and and starting up here cutting off those uh, self-pity feelings and that where you're just kind of moping around and dwelling on the past it's focusing on those fundamentals for this fall and committing yourself to being that better hunter this fall to having those fundamentals in place and to put yourself in a position to get a shot at a great big white tail again this fall again successful people you guys they keep punching they keep getting back up and they keep taking another run at it that's what i want you guys to do that's what i'm going to do this fall i'm not going to let that giant white tail that i missed last fall be a negative for me as a hunter i'm going to turn that around into a positive and I'm gonna use that to fuel my drive for this coming fall to put myself back in that same position where I get a chance at another great big whitetail this fall. And that's how I'm gonna be successful. That's how I've moved on from my miss. And I hope this video has helped you move on from your big miss and given you some tools to use where you can be confident and excited and, uh, and go into this fall with conviction and success. Till next time, take care.